it's Lisa, continuing on with my crafty summer. I wanted to uh, use some of the stamps that I haven't used perhaps as much as I could. So I opened up one of my drawers with stamps and the very first one out of the basket was this set called For the Birds from Stamping Up. I knew when I bought this I probably wouldn't get my money's worth out of it, but I just couldn't resist. It was so cute. Um, and they are great images. I've used them on several cards, but to me they're, they're a little hard to make versatile. They're not the kinds of things I can use for backgrounds and for mixed media and all these different kinds of things. It's just sort of, you know, you've got an image there and you can come up with different card designs, but there's there's just a limit to me to what you can do with these. But there was one image I hadn't used at all, and that was this little birdie with Merry Christmas. So I thought I might go ahead and make a Christmas card from my stash. The challenge is this image is so small. If this were a card front, he's going to get lost on here pretty quick. So I need to give it something, some oomph. And I have, you know, Christmas paper, but I wanted to, you know, use some of my supplies. So I thought it'd be pretty to do a snowflake background. I could cut something on the silhouette, but I'm upstairs, my computer's downstairs. Um, so I will see what I can do with what I have. I had this um, stencil that I just had out working on another project, and I thought this sort of looked like snowflakes. I mean, it's supposed to be flowers, I guess, but I thought I could make it look like snowflakes. So that's what I'm going to try here first. I have some just plain white cardstock and some metallic uh, craft paint. And we're going to see if we can get a snowflakey looking background with this. Just squeeze some of that out on my craft sheet. And I don't want it to be too thick on my brush. I may have to go to a colorful background as opposed to this white. I don't know if it'll show up enough white on white, but we'll see. It's just a little paint. And some cheap cardstock I get at um, Staples. I mean cheap in that per sheet. I think it's like $15 a ream, but that's 250 sheets. And it's a real good quality uh, car suck, and I love the smooth texture. I always, you know, just get whatever the whatever office supply store I'm at. But this last time was Staples, and I really like the quality of their um, cardstock weight. I think it's 110 pound. Oops, trying to move on me. Should probably taped it down. We'll see if this will work. Almost done. Okay, there we go. Okay, and that's pretty. I did miss a couple of spots up there. I'm going to do another one. And of course this is going to have to lay on the top, but I think that's going to be really pretty when it dries. Okay, I'm just setting these aside to dry. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp my image on some white cardstock from Stamping Up. Using black archival ink from Ranger so that I can color in the little bird. And as I started looking at it, I realized I could do quite a few colors with this. I have this red trim that I have just enough to go across the two card fronts, and that's it. So I'm going to use some real red on the uh, scarf around the little bird's neck, and I decided I'd make the birdie blue. And then I'll need some yellow for his beak, and um, there's an ornament in his mouth, so I, can, I have a place there to add a little bit more color. I'm not a fancy colorer, I'm just more of a get it done sort of colorer. I failed coloring when I was in first grade. I mean, really, if there had been a grade for it, I would have failed. I could never stay between the lines. I just, I was just not any good at it. So I, if I can stay between the lines now, I feel like I'm doing good. All right, so I've got um, these stamped and trimmed down, and I'm, again, I'm being lazy. I don't want to go get my computer and cut all my pretty frames on the silhouette, so I'm just using a round um, half inch punch and there's a little cross on the back side of that punch and when you put your um, paper in at an angle you can put the point down in one section of the little cross and it creates a notch. So I do this a lot of times to create um, tags for items so that I don't have to worry about a die cutter. All right, I'm, I've trimmed down my paper here I had it f uh, the full card front size, so I trimmed down a quarter or an eighth of an inch off of each side. And I'm just going to go around the edge with some bashful blue ink, just a hint of it. I don't want a lot there. I'm really going to, the white on white came out so good, I'm just going to leave it uh, mostly white. And 
and I'll just tie that blue in a little bit. And then I wrapped the trim around the front and tied some baker's twine. And I wanted to add just a little bit more to this. And I went to my sort of sparkle drawer where I keep some gems. And at the time, I didn't have much in there. I had a couple of red ones. And I also had these black ones. These, I think, came from a larger image where it had some extra um, little peel-off rhinestones and I didn't use all of them so I just had saved them saved these and they're perfect for the front of this card just to bring a little bit of the black color from the frame and the black and white twine so there's our card all finished up it took me about 45 minutes from beginning to end to do these two cards so I was pleased with this just a quick uh, little um, craft that I got to finish up today and here's a close-up of the um, backing so thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me for other videos in the future.